why don't you have some data, whether that has been passed on to you by a client or whether you've collected this yourself. The thing you want to do next is actually get very familiar with your data. A good and efficient way to do this is to actually plot it. So plots allow you to identify various features which are very important and features that you may have not seen or you may know, know that they exist um, if you don't actually observe your data and look, visualize your data. So such features could be patterns, could be unusual observations, could be changes over time, could be relationships between variables that you're interested in. With time series data, the obvious plot that you would use would be a time plot. Hence, let's have a look at an example and use the A10 table that we built in the previous section of the book to perform this. So remember, the A10 variable was created by um, filtering from the PBS table all the A10 drugs from the ATC2 category and then summing across the different concession groups and patient types. So the A10 table contains the total cost of 18 drugs per month. Probably the easiest way to demonstrate this is to switch over to R and show you what these look like. So here's the A10 symbol. It contains two columns. It contains, well, it contains three columns, the time index month. And then we have total C, which is the total cost of anti-diabetic drugs per month and cost, which is total C divided by a million, if you remember how we constructed this table previously. The way we plot a time series would be to use the auto plot function. Now the auto plot function is a smart function, a smart inbuilt function under its hood, it's got ggplot. But what happens with auto plot is it identifies the argument that you're passing in, into it, the first argument you're passing, and it does something smart with it. In this case, we're passing in it at Sybil, so it knows it's a time series, so it's going to produce, uh, by default, a time series plot. So let's have a look at the plot. Notice here I get, uh, I get a, a message which tells me that the plot variable was not specified, hence it automatically selected uh, total C. So total C is the first variable auto plot sees, and by default it will plot that unless I tell it which variable I want to plot. And in this case, I want to plot the cost variable and not the total C. So let's add that as a second argument into uh, auto plot. So let's do that graph again. And now we're plotting the total cost of A10 uh, drugs uh, per month in millions of dollars. Um, just to demonstrate, uh, a time plot takes the points that we observe in the time series. So so the time series we observe uh, observations at specific points in time, in this, uh, in this case, in months. And if I plotted those plots, so now I'm, here I'm using ggplot and I'm uh, selecting to plot a, a geom point. Okay, I get this type of plot, but this is not very useful for me. The, what is useful for me is to see patterns of the time series. Hence, I join these points with a line and that's what geom line does. Okay, under the hood of auto plot is exactly that. So whether I run this chunk here or whether I run auto plot, I get the same thing. Something that is useful, I find this useful many times is to actually plot the point on top of my line. And that sort of signals where some of the features occur. For example, I can see that there's a specific point in time that these points that these uh, spikes happen at, these peaks happen at. I can add some bells and whistles to my plot here with the labs function. So I add a title and I add a, a, um, a label for my Y axis. And that's, that, those are the two things that I'm usually going to be adding to my plots. Uh, uh, a title, so anti-diabetic drug sales over here, and a, a, a label for my Y axis, and I'll leave the X axis alone. Autoplot is smart enough. He knows he picks out that this is monthly data and he gives me the frequency on my X axis. Okay, let's switch over to the slides and now think a little bit about the time plot and think a little bit about the features of the data that I see in this plot. So as I already alluded to, I can see some spikes 
that happen on a regular basis. And this is a seasonal pattern. We see this spike happen at some specific month of, uh, of each year. That spike is followed by a trough. So I get a trough repeatedly uh, after this, uh, this uh, peak. Also see a trend in this data. It's increasing, it's going upwards. Maybe a nonlinear trend, it's not linear. The other thing that I see is that these, the difference between the spikes and the troughs increase as my level, as the data, uh, as the level of data increases as well. So the difference between a, a spike and a trough at the end of the sample is much larger than the difference between the spike and the, the peak and the trough at the beginning of the sample. Hence what we call this is a multiplicative effect. My seasonality amplitude increases as the level of data increases. We will talk about this in following sections of the book. Let's have a look at another example. This is the ANSET. As you can see, I'm passing the ANSET symbol into Autoplot and I get a very crowded graph. Let me switch over to R to demonstrate this. So here's the ANSET symbol. So let's have a look at what this contains. It contains um, well, four columns, the, the time index, as a Tibble always contains. Um, it's got two uh, keys, airports and class, and combining those two keys, uh, um, cro crossing those two keys, I get 30 time series. And then I have the variable which I observe, which is um, passengers. Um, so when I pass this tibble into autoplot, it tries to plot all these 30 time series and it looks very, very messy. A useful function is this distinct function, which actually shows you the distinct, distinct categories within each key. So here, my key class has got three distinct categories, business, economy, and first class. Uh, my airports key has got 10 categories. So three times 10, hence 30 time series, okay? Let's dig into our data a little bit more. We want to get familiar with the data. That's the point of looking at time plots. Hence, we're gonna, let's filter by class economy. So now I'm gonna get all the time series under this class. So there's gonna get, there's 10 airports, 10 uh, time series under the airport class. So 10, this, uh, 10 uh, routes. Um, and I look at those 10 routes or the economy flights in those 10 routes. Let's get a little bit more specific and look at only one uh, route, Melbourne to Sydney. Okay, and I'm passing, so if you look at this variable, which I've just built, this tibble, um, it contains one key variable class, so economy, business, and first class, and it contains that class, uh, uh, those three classes of flights, for Melbourne Sydney route. Okay, so if I plot that, I should get three time series, and voila, I get three time series. The blue one is the economy class, this one up here, um, and the other two, the red one, which I'm pointing here, is the business class, and this um, green one is the first class. I can see some features. Let me just point out to a couple of features that are interesting here. These, there's a whole bunch of zeros at some period, and that was due to a pilot strike. Strike, So no flights happened, no pilots flew uh, for that period. And there's also this interesting feature where the economy class takes a big dip, but the business class takes goes up. So basically what the airline did was substitute some of their economy travel for business class. Hence, economy class goes down, business class goes up. Okay, um, so let me plot only the economy class for the Melbourne Sydney route. And I take this variable and I'm dividing by a thousand so I can bring the scale uh, into something that is uh, more workable. And I eventually get this plot, which is in the slides. So I'll switch over to the slides and comment on that there. Okay, so here's the plot that I'm looking at. And I can see various features. The two that we've spoken about is are these bunch of zeros and this dip in the economy class, which was substituted by business class. There's also some other um, features, some other troughs that I can see. These ones just before the turn of the year. And that I believe is the week uh, 
the week that contains Christmas. So uh, Christmas Day, there's no flights happening, hence that that drop in flights. Um, there's also some spikes that you see here and there, and they could be due to various events. Uh, for example, uh, it could be the grand final of the Australian Football League happening uh, in Melbourne, or it could be um, some other events, Australian Open and so on.